Army units are increasingly vulnerable to high-tech jet attack aircraft. Protecting the Army against the air threat is the job of the Air Defense Forces. This video ordnance program looks at the United States Army's air defense artillery and the star of that branch, the Patriot Air Defense Missile System. As ground attack aircraft have grown more sophisticated, they have posed a greater and greater threat to Army units. Precision-guided munitions give aircraft the ability to destroy even the toughest targets, such as tanks. To protect itself against the aircraft threat, the U.S. Army depends on its air defense artillery branch. Air defense used to be primarily guns, but since the late 1940s, missiles have become the dominant anti-aircraft weapons. The Nike Ajax was the Army's first anti-aircraft missile. It was designed to defend cities against high-flying bombers. Nike Ajax were static missiles. They were placed around permanent installations, primarily around uh, metropolitan areas, uh, defense areas, and things like that. They were not intended to be mobile. They were fixed in batteries of four to eight missiles in concrete bunkers and were static defense uh, positions against uh, supersonic planes, supersonic bombers. The Nike Ajax was followed by the Nike Hercules, a more sophisticated high-altitude missile system which is still in service in some countries today. As missile technology progressed, it became possible to build more compact missiles that were mobile. They were no longer limited to city defense, but could accompany the army units into the field and defend them against enemy aircraft. Hawk answered that, uh, that need at the time for what would be called today a medium air defense system, again with a supersonic capability that, uh, that again, that the, 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 the traditional medium air defense weapons did not have. Uh, prior to this time, you had a variety of uh, what we call medium range uh, guns to include the 75 millimeter sky sweeper, which again did not quite fill the bill as far as an adequate medium range air defense system. Uh, the Hawk at the time was conceived as that medium range uh, defensive with defensive capability um, and of course is still with us has gone through at least three phases now and is still being used. New guidance technology permitted smaller and smaller missiles better suited to accompanying army units right up to the battle zone. The Sidewinder missile, a standard aircraft dogfighting missile, was adapted to the anti-aircraft role as the chaparral. Not needing the elaborate network of radars found with the longer-ranged Hawk system, the Chaparral is more mobile. It can serve up front and protect armor and mechanized infantry units. The Chaparral missile has a tiny infrared seeker in the nose, which homes in on the heat given off by jet aircraft. One of the most remarkable developments in air defense missiles was the man-portable missile. The first of these was Red Eye, followed in the 1980s by the more advanced Stinger. Stinger employs a very sensitive heat-seeking guidance system which enables it to home in on attacking aircraft and helicopters. The use of heat-seeking guidance on these short-range missiles has led many air forces to adopt countermeasures, such as flares, in an attempt to confuse and decoy the missiles. In turn, to counteract such tactics, the new ADATS missile uses laser guidance, which cannot be bluffed by flares. Air defense missile technology is a never-ending contest between the aircraft designers, attempting new ways to jam and confuse anti-aircraft missile guidance, and the missile designers, trying to overcome these new tactics. 
the use of different types of missiles using radar, infrared, and laser guidance makes it difficult for an aircraft to penetrate modern air defense networks. The U.S. Army uses a layered air defense from the Stinger to the new Patriot missile. Well, the U.S. Army, like most uh, uh, military forces, fields a complementary uh, mix of air defense system designed to counter different threats. Uh, at, the, at the low end of the spectrum, we start with the short-range air defense systems, primarily the Stinger, a man-portable weapon, which is very short-range uh, and is a heat-seeking missile. Uh, and then we go up to the, uh, the Vulcan uh, cannon uh, and the Chaparral missile system, which are, again, short-range components. Uh, we are bringing on a new system called the Avenger, which takes the Stinger missile and puts it in a, uh, a mobile vehicle with a, uh, a soldier-operated uh, turret. Uh, and then beyond the short-range air defense systems, we have uh, two, two primary, what we call high-mad or high-to-medium altitude systems. Uh, the first is the Hawk system, uh, which is uh, a radar-directed system, and we get into a range there of about 40 kilometers. Uh, and then, of course, what we feel is the centerpiece of our HIMAD systems, which is the Patriot system, which is the newest and most modern and has the greatest capability, and its range is out to about 160 kilometers. In the 1960s, the U.S. Army began to develop a new missile system which could fulfill the roles of both the high-altitude Nike Hercules and the medium-altitude Hawk missiles. This new air defense system emerged in the 1980s as the Patriot. Radar is the only reliable guidance method for long-range air defense missiles, so it formed the center of the new Patriot system. An advanced phased array radar was selected for the Patriot, the first such use with a mobile land-based missile system. Conventional radars emit a constant beam of radiation which can alert an enemy pilot and permit the aircraft to try to jam the radar. The Patriot's phased array radar uses rapid beams that search the sky so quickly that an enemy aircraft doesn't even know it's being tracked. Thousands of times a second, the radar's computer triggers these beams in different directions, memorizing where each aircraft was last spotted. In older systems like the Hawk or Nike Hercules, several radars were needed to search for the aircraft, to track it, and finally to guide the missile against it. On the Patriot, all these functions are performed by the single phased array radar. In spite of its sophistication, computer-controlled operations make the Patriot easier to operate than older systems, and it needs a smaller crew. Comparison-wise, Nike Hercules and Patriot are the difference between night and day as far as the operator is concerned. With the Patriot system, we're using the computers on board the system to take control of the mundane tasks that had to be performed manually in the Nike Hercules system. Uh, with the Nike Hercules, to get a missile in the air, you had to go through a series of crew checks, adjusting meters, potentiometers, peaking and aligning the system. It took time. Uh, and it was a single-shot missile. With Patriot, that stuff happens automatically in the flash of an eye, and all the operator has to concentrate on is looking at his display, determining which targets are hostile, and engaging those targets in a timely fashion. The sophisticated radar used in the Patriot system permitted the use of a novel guidance technology in the Patriot missile. After launch, the radar guides the missile near the target aircraft. 